Hi, I'm Sharon from the Stitch Foundry and today we're going to be talking all things crochet. So I'm going to start with what I've been working on. One of the things I've been working on this week is the hearts in the background that you can see. I've got a few here to show you. So as you can see, they work up really well in any yarn and you can make them using just tiny amounts as well, just scraps. This one was made using just what was left over from two other projects. But my favorite is cotton. I love cotton yarn anyway. So I love anything in cottons. So I'd love to see if you make them, let me know on Instagram. I'm the Stitch Foundry, so you can tag me or tag the hearts. They're known as what is it? I've named them and I can't remember. Boho Crochet Hearts. So use that use that hashtag if you make them. And uh, I'll link to the video. There's a video tutorial where I go through step by step how to make them. I started this one in lockdown one. It's a present for my mother-in-law. Um, it's not for any particular birthday or anything like that. So, you know, because it'd be pretty late by now. She likes red. So much to say about it, except it is quite a big, it's, you know, it's getting there. The yarn that I'm using is the Women's Institute Premium Acrylic Yarn. And the reason I'm using this yarn is so that it's washable and I wanted to keep it kind of lightweight. So this is double knit, but it's a lightweight kind of double knit. Um, I've got another blanket I'll show you next that I started. It is double knit, but it's already really heavy. It's meant to be a baby blanket. When I say baby blanket, I mean for my dog. He kind of gets all the baby blanket size blankets. This is my other, this, I don't know why I'm showing you this because I have not worked on this for ages. But I picked it up the other day and I thought oh, I really should finish it because it's kind of cute. What I kind of love doing is getting a stitch pattern and changing it. This one was based on the block stitch and I've put it into a ripple design. And so I was just really testing out the technique and the colour changes. So but I think I will write this up on the blog just as um, not as a pattern, not as this full thing, probably just explaining how to do the stitch. I don't know, what do you think? Do you like it? I don't know, let me know, let me know in the comments. Isn't that what we say? Let me know in the comments, let me know in the comments. Powering through these, aren't we? If you haven't realised, I am obsessed with crochet stitches and so the next thing I'm showing you is my very first crochet stitch book and the reason I'm showing you this is because it's something I still love this book like I have loads of crochet books and stitch dictionaries and I still love this one like I love them all they're all my little babies but I really love this one and um, the harmony guide to crocheting just it has it's in UK terms it's a very consistent it's writ all the stitch patterns are written very consistently. I really like that and they all have diagrams as well. The photos aren't too bad either because some stitch dictionaries, especially the older ones, the photos are awful and I always think I could do that. You know you look at the stitch and it's like mm, not sure. They'll make it up and say wow this is amazing. Why didn't they use like either a coloured yarn or a decent yarn? These ones are good, really good. It has some fillet crochet, has some motifs, it's got everything. It's such a great guide. When I first bought this, I think I got it off eBay for like, I don't know, three pounds or something. And it was just my world. You know, I was like, just seeing a stitch now it looks amazing. It's such a cool name as well, Paradise Stitch. I just, I really love crochet stitches. And I know some designers like to use crochet as the medium for other things. So for color, color design, color work, you know, tapestry crochet, but I, for me, like even just thinking about it, I don't know, I just love 
playing around with stitches, make a post stitch here, or what if I miss a stitch and do a chain instead, or no, that's really basic. But I don't know, I just love playing around with stitches and I love making things into other shapes. So if it's from a stitch dictionary where it's a rectangle, I love making that into a triangle. I love working out the maths to do that. That's what I did with this design, which I was actually gonna talk about anyway. When I first designed this, my idea was I wanted to make a simple modern virus shawl using circles. A virus shawl with circles. And so at the time, and, and also at the time, I wanted to call it, what was I going to call it? Oh, I'll look it up. I'll see if I can remember because I had some pattern testers who were kind of like, you can't, that's, no, don't call it that. But I was calling it something like toxic waste or it wasn't that, but it was something like that. Or like, it's really easy to remember. Um, I don't know what I was thinking at the time. I went with a kind of, yeah, lime green border. I don't, I wanted a contrast and I, it felt like a risk. I think sometimes you do that, you know, you think, yeah, I'll see how it goes. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to go for it. And I, I, I don't know if it's paid off really. This yarn, I actually dyed myself. Um, I went through a phase of yarn dyeing, but it's very physical. Like, it, there's a lot of work in yarn dyeing. And I loved it, but there's a lot of work. And I just, I couldn't, I couldn't maintain it. I have a net problem, which means sometimes I can't crochet, which is very annoying. And when I can't crochet, I look for other things to do, whether it's knitting, I tried cross stitch, that lasted maybe a week, did not like cross stitch. So I tried dyeing, but you know, I've got a neck problem and you've got to cart around, you know, big buckets of water and things like that. So dyeing yarn probably wasn't the best thing to do when your neck is flared up. I've not really promoted it as a new virus shawl. Do we even talk about the virus shawl anymore? That's actually something I've not come across that much. I was in, uh, I'm in a few crochet Facebook groups and there was a new, like a beginner crochet, a beginner crocheter asking, um, what's the deal with the virus shawl? Like why is, why is there a thing even called the virus shawl in a pandemic? And people had to, you know, obviously explain, no, it's not, it's not the virus, it's not that virus, it's just the virus shawl, it's got nothing to do with the virus. So yeah, I, I, I really love this pattern though, it's like I have great fondness for this design and I would like to, I don't know, kind of revive it. I might do it in um, different yarn and this was using one skein. I might do it using two or even maybe a whirl or something like that. Actually, that would look good, wouldn't it? Yeah, I might try that. Or if anyone wants to try it, let me know in the comments. If you have some yarn that you think would be perfect for this, let me know and I'll make sure you get the pattern. That'd be great, as long as you can you know, let me share some photos because it'd be really good for other people to see this worked up, you know, in a big, big sort of well type thing. I think that would be lovely. At the minute, it's a, I, I don't have the free pattern available. It's just, it's just a paid pattern. But what I want to do, I am going to put it on my blog as a free pattern. So basically, I'll just explain that, what I do what I'm doing is putting my patterns on my blog for free. And if you want to have a printable PDF, you can um, buy it off Etsy or Lovecrafts or Ravelry. And eventually I will have ads on my blog, but at the minute I'm just putting my content out. I feel like it's a win for both of us. So you get access to really good, <laughs> You get access to really good patterns. 
I'm, what I meant to say is you get access to professionally written patterns because I have, you know, I write to, I write to a professional standard. Most of my patterns are written in a consistent way and I really enjoy pattern writing. So you get to see what, you know, you get to see the pattern before you pay for it, if you wanted to pay for it, um, you know, if you wanted to print it off or if you wanted to download it onto your computer or something like that. So it's a win for you because you get access to the pattern and it's a win for me because ultimately I am going to have ads on the blog and I get to continue to design and that's, um, you know, that is a big win, you know, because that is what I love doing. The last thing I'm going to show you, well no, actually I've got two more things to show you. This is not a new thing, this is an old, this is one of my very first designs actually. This is the Easy Crochet Cow, or Guinevere was her name. And I love this. This is worked up in four ply cotton. It's a very easy two row repeat and it's great for beginners because they're very simple stitches. You've just got double crochets and um, chains, I think. Double crochets and chains, maybe single crochets. It's been a while since I made it. But it, it is very beginner friendly, but it's also really good for just sitting down and watching Netflix. It's a two row repeat but you'll, remem you'll remember it really easily, but it's not boring either. Um, I know people have made this in multicolored yarn. It looks really great in like sort of self-striping yarn or in a whirl or something like that. Then I had the idea that I was going to do it in double knit. Yeah, so I was going to, I was going to show you this actually. I was going to say, oh, look what I've been working on. A double knit version of this cowl, but then as I was getting it ready to show you, inspiration struck. I've had this mad idea for something completely different. I think it would look amazing in this yarn. I think I'm going to frog it. But that just means more crochet. I, I know a lot of people get very stressed about frogging. If you don't know what frogging is, that's when you literally just rip it back. Rib it, rib it, rib it, you know, frog noise. Well, it's a cartoon frog noise. You then use the yarn for something else and so or it, you can frog something when you've noticed a mistake kind of way back here and decide to frog it I used to now I'm kind of a bit more easy going but if I have had to when I have had to frog something when I was working making the samples for magazines I would want them to be perfect so I, I had frogged things numerous times and the way I started looking at it was, well, it's just more, more crochet. Can't complain about that. Maybe next week I will have started a new project and I can, I don't want to say what it is yet because it's kind of a bit, I don't know if it's a bit weird, a bit of a weird idea. So I'm just going to have a play and see what I can come up with. So this is a blanket that I'm working on. It's made up of squares that you seam together. I love this. I, I worked on this for a long time to get it just how I wanted it. There's a lot going on. Like you've got the individual square there. And so you've got the triangles in the individual squares. When it's joined up, you get other shapes forming. And then you also get a, like a ring effect. It's the kind of thing that the more you look at it, the more you see in it. My friend was looking at it and she saw something, Jill, saw something in it that I hadn't even noticed. I was like, oh wow, yeah, that's like a fourth thing. I, I started working this up in some superwash merino because I like the color of it. It had really good stitch definition. It was detracting from the other stuff that was going on. This project isn't about the individual stitches. It's about the shapes that are formed in it. So then I tried it in a cotton and the same thing because, you know, cotton gives amazing stitch definition. So then I was thinking, well, what, what yarn do you not get brilliant stitch definition? This is nothing against acrylic, but this yarn just, this colour, I didn't want a colour that was too strong to take away from it, but I wanted, I don't know, it was like, 
when I went to Abacan, this is before, um, this is when we could go to the shops. And Abacan is my, it's not my, it takes, I think it's about 15 minutes to get to Abacan. It's not my local, local yarn shop. I do have a closer yarn shop, but um, Abacan is amazing. I was just walking along, I thought, oh, I'm just going to let it jump out at me. And it, it did. And I saw this, I was like, that's the yarn. Love that. I've got all these blankets that I've started and by the time I finish them it's going to be spring or summer and I should be making cotton projects. So I hope you've enjoyed the first uh, Stitch Foundry podcast. I'd love to know where you're from and what you'd like to see in the podcast next. Let me know in the comments. I'm the Stitch Foundry on Facebook, Instagram, my website stitchfoundry.com. Sorry, thestitchfoundry.com. I don't even know my own website. And I hope to see you next week. Thank you.